Well, we can go in and stylize it by creating classes. You can also use field sets to stylize these forms. I'm gonna use tables instead. Um, so what I'd like to start out with is just adding a table to get started here inside the form. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a table, the first opening tag, and then have the last closing table tag at the very bottom. But I'm just gonna create a basic table and then have different table rows and table data. I'm gonna go ahead and create the table above it so that I don't get confused. So remember, I'm gonna create a row, which is with the TR tag, and then I'm gonna create two columns if I have two table data opening and closing tags. So since I have one, two, one, two, one, two, like two elements that I'm gonna basically create, I'm gonna have an element on the left and an element on the right, and then at the very bottom, I'm gonna do a call span, which is gonna allow me to have one table and uh, put the submit and the reset form in together. So I'll show you what that means. So I'm basically gonna take this table. I have the closing table at the very bottom, so I don't need to worry about that. I'm just gonna copy it. Uh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna have seven rows. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now remember on the last one, I'm gonna add a call span attribute. equals two. And if that's the case, I can delete a table row, a table data column. Okay, so I can see that all these have two table, table data um, columns. And I'm eliminating the need for both of them in this last one by creating, I'm saying, I'm just gonna cancel that and just do one column but I'm spanning it to two, to into two columns. So it's the two columns that would normally be taken up here are now just one. Okay, so if I had three here, then um, all of these would automatically have three columns. So this always defaults to however many table data there are in one of the rows. So if there's one row with three columns, they automatically all have to have three columns unless you specify inside this tag or the, with a call span. You can do the same thing with rows. You can say, I wanna do row span, and so just change the COL to ROW. If you wanna have it go vertical, like uh, spanning two rows um, for, uh, for your table row, you can do that. But for this, we're just gonna do a call span of two. We're gonna save that. Now, at that point, at this point, we're ready to drop it in to our uh, our form. I'm just going to take this, cut it. The label is going to go in the first table data. Then that input type text is going to go in the second table data of the first row. So I'm just going to keep doing this where I have the label in the first element, the first table data, and the input in the second. So it's all together. So label here, cut, paste, input type is phone, cut, paste. So I'm just doing this for all of them. And then for the last one, I'm just gonna copy it and put it right in here. So they're both gonna be inside the same table data um, tag. Save that and refresh. And now we have multiple submit and uh, reset. So you can see I have it duplicated here, so I need to delete that. I need to delete all of the empty tags as well. And now the table is complete. So if I refresh that, you'll see that it looks correct 
in the way that it's supposed to. Now, I can start styling this a lot better. You can see that these automatically look more organized. Yeah, they're all left aligned instead of all jagged. Uh, earlier they had these fields that were butting up against to um, the this text, the text area here. So you saw that how this field was kind of jagged and not really clean. Now we have a clean cut right here. They're all left aligned to the to the left side of the table. So I can save that, go to the style sheet, and start my um, table specifications. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say table td. And inside of those, I can add a border. Save that and refresh. And now it automatically has a red border. Okay, so you can see how I've only got one column down here at the bottom, um, but it's defaulting to that first column. When I see this uh, uh, call span, it's not going all the way to the edge. I know I did something a little wrong. So I'm gonna go back to my contact form. And uh, indeed, I put the call span on the table row. It needs to go on the table data location. So I, I messed that up earlier. It needs to be call span on the table data and you'll see when I refresh it now it's showing like it's supposed to. And that makes more sense than putting it on the table row because the table data, um, I had two of them up here and now I'm I'm spanning this TD so it basically acts as if it's co covering two columns. So um, that's what we're looking for there. Now I can, I can um, specify the um, width of each of these table columns by simply putting a width in one of the table row data. So like I can put in just in this one and all of them will default to this width by me specifying it here. Um, so if I put 40%, I can do a percentage or a pixel value. Um, at this point, I put 40 and 60. You can see if I put 20 and 80%, it'll look a lot more lopsided like that and right now we don't have a specification on on the size of this table which I'm going to do in just a minute so I'm going to say there's the width and then I can go into the the style sheet and put on the table itself give it a width oops Give it a width of, you know, I can give it a width of 100%, which will span the whole div element that surrounds it, which means it's going to cover this whole area. I don't like that. So I could do like 30% if I wanted to, and it would fit in 30%. But I'm just going to give it a pixel value, which is, I'm going to say 400 pixels. Save. Refresh that. And that looks about right. So... Then I just do the margin zero auto on this element, this table element, and refresh it, and it'll all center it for me. So it's not centering the text inside, it's just centering the div itself. If I want the text, all of the text to be centered, I just do what I typically do, which is text align center, save that, and refresh. And now you'll see everything centered. But I don't really like that for my table. I would rather have these, uh, this left column um, right aligned and this right column left aligned. So I can go in and create a class and I can then stylize each of these different columns and then I can create one at the bottom too for the uh, that one um, element at the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna create a table data class and I'm gonna say equals left or let's say L column and I'm just going to copy this class and paste it in all of my left columns so it's always the first one in this underneath the table row and I don't need to do it for the very bottom one because I don't have a left and right column I'm not going to align them to the left or the right side I'm just going to leave it in the center um, so I'm going to say left and I'm going to do this one as a column and I'm going to say R column give it a space 
copy, paste that in for each of the right columns. I don't have a right column back here, but I am going to give it a class and say bottom. Save it. Go back to my table. I'm taking the text align center off because I don't want everything to be text aligned to the center. Um, but I'm going to put the TD dot because remember class is, is with a dot. And I said L column. I'm going to copy this and paste it below it for the R column and then also copy it for the bottom. So I, cause I had those three different classes that I put on them and I'm going to give each one space so I can set them all up, make sure they're all ready to go. And then inside the L column, I'm going to give it a text align, right? Save that for the left column. Then I can say refresh. You'll see that these are all butt up to the right side. The right column, I can say text dash align left, which it's already doing by default. I don't have to actually add that, but I'm going to anyway. Text dash align center. So then now you'll see the submit and reset form goes to the center. Now everything looks like it should. Now if I want to do some padding on each on this so that it, it frees up some space so it's not right on this red line here, I can do the left column and say padding five pixels. I can do each of those and say padding for just those top two if I want to only do these specific classes. I can see padding now for those and not for this bottom one. If I want to do them for all of the table data, I can find this element and put it on that location. So, but I want to show you a couple things here first. So I'm going to create a table data style and I'm going to put the padding of five here. So save and refresh and you'll see them all change, even the bottom submit and re reset form buttons. Now, if I put the padding on the table, not the table data, if I put the padding on the table, save it and refresh, you'll see that there's padding are surrounding that table element. So here's the table border, this very, this outside line. And then on the inside of that is the padding. So if I put margin on the outside of the table, it's going to take the space surrounding this table border up here. If I wanted a table, a margin at the top, I could do that. I could say margin So you can see that I added some margin here by adding the 10 pixels and having the auto. And I wrote out all of all four of them so that it would show 10 pixels, auto on left and auto on right, and then the zero on the bottom. So there's no margin at the bottom. So you can do all of that um, on this table itself. And then you can add, um, there's a border on the table data itself. So the margin would be in this area, which is the tables padding. The tables padding is the table data's margin and the, the table data padding is inside of uh, this border surrounding the table data itself. Okay, so that's kind of how you can start to implement that. If you want to take the padding off of the TD element and just have a border around the table data, you can do that. You can have just a line at the border top and maybe the border bottom. on both the table and the TD. I don't like that one so much, but I probably would like this one on just the table itself. So you can see there's lots of options as to how you set that up. And of course, I don't want to leave any of these blank. If there's nothing in the CSS, just take it out. So I would take that out there. So you can see lots of different options um, about how to stylize your form and then you could submit it and it'll go to an email address once this is actually available on a web server online you can do that um, it's not going to go anywhere right now so if you submitted that it wouldn't it wouldn't go to the email um, at this point but once it's in on a website that should work um, with this with this format okay so that's the basics of creating a contact form you can see that uh, you'll, you can do it several different ways. 
You can use a field set to create styling, or you can use the table data um, and the table element for all of uh, your form and making it simple and how to uh, set up your, your contact form. So uh, work on that, and I'll uh, look forward to seeing your project, your uh, exercise for this in the future weeks. Thanks.